Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not a type of brother to play with. See a lot of people acting like a oh yeah. Oh, ball play sounding like haters. We the young kings of this generation, oh yeah. What's up, y'all? Welcome back. Pitch side with Parker. And I hope everybody's having a good weekend out there. Man, it's just, it's been a crazy week just all throughout the world and in the news. I hope y'all are well. And I know that it has been a really challenging week for a lot of people, uh, myself included. And so I just want to say, you know, I wish, you know, love and peace to everybody who's watching these videos. And, you know, if you need to take a minute to step off social media or, you know, go eat something good or, you know, lay down, do whatever you got to do, man, because I, I, I know we all need a break sometimes. So I wanted to talk about the protests that are going on right now in the NBA, the um, strikes essentially that the players are taking. I'm kind of running out of time. I'm about to do this before work. So um, I'm just going to stay focused on the Bucks for this video. If you're new, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I know I don't always do basketball content here, but if you're somebody who likes basketball, hey man, you should subscribe and come along for the ride as well because I do cover a lot of different stuff. I've been watching the NBA playoffs all the time, but I do feel like, you know, as far as regular videos, realistically, I'm just not going to be able to give you the best basketball content that's out there. So I'm going to let you go to other people for that. But I will touch on it from time to time. And I think what's going on with the NBA playoffs right now is more than a sports issue. It's a social issue, but it's something that combines all avenues of a lot of people's lives. And so um, I certainly feel like it's something that I wanted to talk about. So yeah, if this is your first video, be sure to subscribe and go ahead and like the video right now. Go ahead and do it before we even get started and then we can get into it. So a lot of y'all probably already know what's going on, but the NBA players are currently sitting out and have postponed their last couple of playoff games in response to the shooting of Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin by a police officer. The Milwaukee Bucks decided not to come out for their playoff game against the Magic the other night. And then the rest of the teams that night decided to follow suit and not play their games as well. And this was a pretty much spark of the moment decision. The Raptors and the Celtics had talked about doing it before their game, but there was no plan put in place. And then from all accounts, it seems like the Bucks kind of just decided before tip off. Um, and you can't blame them because you have to realize how close this hits home to this Bucks team. Not only is Kenosha very close to Milwaukee and they would be the closest franchise to where that shooting happened. But also, they've been hit as a team personally with instances of um, police brutality and racism from the police. In the past, one of their players was stopped by a police officer. And I forget the details or exactly what his name was. I'll probably put it up here. But um, he was stopped by a police officer and maced and put on the ground. And he literally hadn't done anything at all. Um, just another instance of kind of the way that police will treat black people in this country. And then I know that John Henson also, I only know this because I'm a Carolina fan and follow him closer than some of the other players, had gotten racially profiled at a jewelry store before after he signed his first contract. And both of those were pretty big news too. So like this is a team that has been personally impacted by police brutality and that's not unique so I'm not surprised that they decided to take a stand but I was really impressed and encouraged by the courage that they showed in terms of making a stand because as much as people have been talking about it to actually go out there and not play a game that is a huge historic and significant step because I've heard that it only happened one other time in NBA history Oh, Bill Russell sat out with one of his Celtics teams, but it was certainly nowhere near the caliber of game that we're talking about here where Milwaukee and Orlando were in the middle of a playoff series. What it shows in reality is that these players have the league by the balls. Like, let's be honest about it, because if they just decide one day that they're not going to play, the league is immediately crippled by that response. They will lose money directly from those games just sitting out by itself had a huge impact. And then the, the conversation shifted to what is this going to lead to and how will this change things? And that's obviously the bigger topic here. There's been meetings across the last few days with the NBA players all kind of coming together and speaking with the commissioner and speaking, hoping to get an audience with the owners and hope that they can change something because far, far too many times in this country, the onus is put on people who are disadvantaged 
to actually make the change as opposed to people who are in the positions of power and the people who are actually the oppressors making the change. And that's a really twisted way to go about it. So they are saying, look, we want steps from the owners. We want assurances from the owners that they are going to do more than just put names on the back of the jerseys and put Black Lives Matter on the court and, you know, allow us to say things in the post game. Like it has to be more than that. It has to be action. I do think that this is the right way to go about it. Um, not that what I think really matters that much, but this is showing the power that the players have. And I hope that teams and other players around sports and around different countries are realizing this because without the players, nothing is possible. I think they've really hit on something key there, which is that their presence as players and their importance to everything that happens in the NBA is crucial. Realistically, if they are strong enough, the owners will have to bend to their will. Now, my hope here is that they are in contact with like organizers and with people who have been pushing for certain policy changes and, you know, potentially pushing for abolition of the police and of the prison industrial complex. That is where hopefully this could gain some leverage. They might need some help because, I mean, let's be honest, like a lot of the things that you hear in their interviews are pretty basic and pretty, I guess, general statements that they would say in terms of like, you know, we need people to vote. We, we hear the, the term educate yourselves all the time. Um, and we hear, you know, just respect everybody, these kind of things. And I'm not blaming the NBA players because they're basketball players. They're not organizers. They're not, this is not their job, especially under the pressure that they're in to kind of make a decision and give a list of commands. I don't know that they can come up with a complete list and a list that's going to change everything. That's the unfortunate reality is that as powerful as these have been, to me, the only way that this could lead to like a really, really significant overhaul change, more so than it's already been, because this has certainly been a historic statement, is if they actually end up canceling the season. And that was my first thought when this happened, is that, man, if somebody like LeBron or, you know, just the players as a whole together say we're not playing the rest of this year, it's done until something changes, until X, Y, and Z, our demands have been met, the owners would simply have to bow down to them. They could not deal with that loss of money and that loss of games. And like, literally, they could not handle it. There's no way. Because we saw what happened with other sports when the pandemic happened. And I mean, this is true of the NBA too. This is why they're playing in a bubble, is that they literally could not afford to not have a, the rest of a season. The owners felt so much financial pressure because literally all they care about is money. So hit their wallets and that's where you're going to see some change. No pun intended. Again, the owners, they need this for their bottom line. They see teams as an investment. They don't care about these players as people. This is their part of their portfolio for most of these billionaires that are in charge. If you hit that, you could make some real change. Now, the reports that I've seen recently is that they will actually go back to playing but with an assurance that a few different needs have been met. I'll put more information on that here. I'm kind of like freestyling this video, to be honest, because I just wanted to come here and chat. I hadn't done a video in a few days. But I do wonder if that will hamper some of the progress that this could have led to a little bit. So before I put out the video, I did um, put this on Twitter and say that I'm making a video, and I said that I wanted to answer questions um, that you guys had. And I did get a couple of comments about the NBA protests and the protests that have now bled into other sports as well. That's the other thing to mention is that the WNBA followed suit with the NBA and they, as they have continuously done, even before NBA was protesting, have really centered the movement for social justice in their games and they decided to boycott their games as well. And then we even saw some teams across the MLS, although it was not total, we saw an MLB game that was boycotted and I think some NHL games, NFL practices have not been happening. Um, this has spread to pretty much every American sport because it took the courage of the Bucks for other people to feel like they had to follow. Because everybody knows that morally you can't stand for police brutality. You can't stand for institutional racism. So it's a pretty easy thing to follow once somebody makes a big step. And I think that's another great learning point from everything that's happened with the Bucks is as soon as they were willing to cancel a game, 
everybody followed suit rapidly. Everybody appreciated what they did in terms of the players, at least. It's really easy to gain momentum with something like this. It just takes that courage of the first person to actually do it. But yes, but I did ask if people had thoughts on this. So I do want to get to those uh, before this video is over. And unfortunately, I played myself because I am recording this on my phone. As you know, I record these videos on my phone. And uh, that's also where my Twitter lives. So if you give me just a moment, I'm going to read the tweets and then I'll be right back. All right. Sorry about that. But the first question came from Frederick. Thank you for the question, my man. I hope all is well. And he says, what do you want to see from leagues where the players are not primarily black? This is a really important question because, again, as I've said, the onus should not be on the people who are being discriminated against to speak up and to advocate for the change. There needs to be allies. There needs to be people around them who are also stepping up in support. And realistically, there's been a huge difference in the leagues demographically, which have chosen to participate or not in these protests this week. The NBA and WNBA sweepingly, quickly, totally decided to cancel everything. They were with it. And that shouldn't really come as a surprise, again, because both of those leagues are primarily black players. And the WNBA as well is black women who are playing. And certainly they understand better than anybody else what is wrong in this country. And then that's where you see the difference in response from these other leagues, because in the MLS, certain teams were willing to protest, certain teams were not. I know there was one game with Orlando and Nashville where during the national anthem, all the Nashville players kneeled. Only one, I think, of the Orlando players kneeled, and that was a big deal. You know, there's not the same cohesion, and the NHL is in the playoffs right now. They're in a very similar stage to what the NBA is. And even though I don't really watch hockey, I can tell very simply that there it would be just as easy for them to cancel games and raise awareness and to boycott if they really supported the movement. But I think that you can count on about one hand how many black players are in the NHL. I don't, again, I don't follow hockey, so I could be a little bit off on that, but I know it's not a lot. And I know that the few black players who there are have spoken out about this and said that they wish for a better response for the NHL. And then, you know, MLB, the Milwaukee Brewers protested their game. And that seemed like a movement in solidarity with the Bucks and with the city of Milwaukee and the state of Wisconsin where Jacob Blake was shot. But they were the only team. So, Frederick, I think you ask a very important question. And if you ask me what would I like to see from these leagues where they're not pri primarily black, I mean, you got to put your money where your mouth is, man. Like, there are still black players in your league. And if you are not taking the same steps that the NBA and that the WNBA are, then you're not doing enough. And you're leaving people out to dry. And you're, again, showing what I've said a few times before, which is that you value these people as athletes and you don't value them as people. The people that you are competing with in your league and the people that you've played with your whole life. I don't think that protesting a game is the only way that you can show that you care, but now that that standard has been so quickly and powerfully set by the Bucks and then the rest of the NBA and the WNBA, I think you're making a statement by not sitting out if you're in the NHL, if you're in the MLB. And I'm not saying that they have to boycott the rest of their season, but it's interesting to me how many people very quickly jumped on the Black Lives Matter campaign when all they had to do was post a black tile on Instagram or put Black Lives Matter on their jerseys, which was mandated by the leagues, and they could make advertisements about it and make more money off of it. Thank you um, to this passing truck for revving your engine when you saw that I was recording a video. But it's been a very different response from people when they actually had to make a significant statement of canceling a game, of not doing the thing that they love and that so many people are wanting to watch and using as an outlet right now they weren't willing to give that up yeah they need to do more i mean that's that's the long and short of it so the second question came from isaac thank you isaac for the question he said something along the lines of um do you see this bleeding over into european soccer kind of similar to the way that they had solidarity moments um with the black lives matter movement and they we saw some protests going on in europe you know isaac i would like to believe so i would because especially if the MLS and the NWSL get active and do more than they have so far, 
um, especially if, for instance, the Real Salt Lake owner, who is super racist, and that has been exposed all throughout the media recently, gets taken out of his ownership position. I think that if that happens, it would make it more likely to spread to Europe, just since it's soccer and soccer. However, uh, I am pretty skeptical with that. I think it's just important to consider the context, honestly, because what made it over there was Black Lives Matter. Because there's plenty of black people in Europe, and that concept is very, you know, readily understandable. There's obviously a lot of racism in Europe. Europeans are the ones who started racism, so they certainly understand that. But I think there's a little bit of a disconnect with how deep this is to American people. As I said before, especially to, like, the Milwaukee Bucks in particular, as they've literally had people who have been profiled and accosted by the police. Europeans, I don't think, have that same context. America is pretty special, and not in a good way, in that it's not only an issue of policing, it's an issue of gun violence and shooting people. Police in England don't carry guns. They don't just go around killing people, and that is a pandemic in the USA, um, and people like that Kyle guy who went up and shot people at the protest after they were protesting police brutality with an AR-15. Literally, those type of things are not possible in other countries. And that was a big part of what the outrage was in America. So I just don't think they feel that same visceral reaction when there's a story like Jacob Blake. That is clearly what sparked these protests. So I don't know that I really think it will continue over to Europe in the same way, but I do think maybe some of the, as you say, symbolic, I think is the key word in your tweet. I do think that some of those things will carry over maybe into European soccer, but let's be honest, if you're a soccer fan, you understand that their piecemeal attempts at fixing racism, you know, say no to racism and kick it out and all that, they're always too little too late. Um, I wouldn't keep my expectations too high for a response over across the pond. But yeah, that's a few thoughts that I, I have on the situation and I did want to speak about it because this is, I mean, this is huge historical stuff that's happening in the NBA and, you know, it's something that I'm definitely always interested in. You know, it's it sent shockwaves through, through the entire sports world. So I definitely wanted to speak on it and kind of share some of my thoughts and answer y'all's questions. Um, if you want to get involved in future videos, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I put links in the description of every video. It'll be in this one as well. Um, it's on my homepage. Go ahead and follow me if you don't already. Um, and you can be a part of these videos too, just like Frederick and Isaac were. Yeah, there will definitely be a lot more videos coming. I'll probably touch on Messi and Maguire in a different video, even though I said that would be happening today. But yeah, man, I appreciate everybody who tuned into this. Subscribe if you're new. Drop a like on this video. And I will see you in the next one. It's time for me to go to work. So I've got money to make. Peace.